Hey everyone, it's Dan at SP Motorsport. On this week's product spotlight, we're gonna be going over our 2017 and up fuel filtration system that we came out with for the 6.7 Power Stroke. We're gonna basically go over the product we have to offer here and the whole reason why we did it and some of the downfalls of the factory system and the positive notes of our system. So one of the main reasons we came out with our fuel filtration system is because there's a lot of issues with the factory filters. And one of the main problems that we've seen over the years is the top filter actually will crack or has uh, casting issues when they mold them. So obviously that's a problem. There's other solutions on the market for it. Um, a lot of them keep the, the filter in the same location, but it's a can style filter. It goes on top of the engine. There's, there's kind of like a billet mount for it. The filter screws up from the bottom. One of the issues with that filter system or that setup is the fact that when you take the filter off, you're dumping fuel all over the top of the engine, either that or you have to pull all the lines off and then take the filter off that way and then unscrew it. Either way, you're dumping fuel all over the motor. So that's something that if you look at any other manufacturer, as far as uh, trucks, big rigs, uh, medium duty, whatever it may be, most of them are putting the filters down low so that you're not having any of the messy issues when you're changing them. You can take them off and you're not dumping fuel all over the engine, frame, cab, whatever it may be, etc. So that was a, a big thing with us is we wanted to kind of clean the setup up, get it out of the way, um, get everything off the engine so you didn't have a big fuel mess everywhere. So what we ended up coming up with was a system that not only replaced the top filter on the truck, but also the lower water separator filter as well. And the one thing we wanted to do is condense everything to the same area. So uh, a lot of people are familiar with the old air dog, fast setups and fuel system setups where all the filters are kind of in one location, it's convenient. So what we wanted to do is bring that to the factory application so that everything is in one location on the truck. So what you do, on the 17 and up trucks for this setup is you take the lower water and fuel separator assembly, you unbolt the factory one, slide it up out, disconnect all your lines, and you slide our assembly back in place. So it's a literal single bolt drop-in setup. It uses the factory location, factory mount, everything stays the same. The only thing that we're doing is we're moving the top filter now down underneath the truck. So we give you all the required fuel hose, adapt the fittings, everything. The nice thing though, is that you don't actually have to cut or mess with any of the factory lines on the truck. It's all just kind of plug and play, disconnect, plug it in. So that's kind of what our idea behind the whole setup was. That's what we wanted to hit with it. And the other thing that we wanted to hit with, and it was a big key factor when we did the design work on the setup, is we wanted to give the best filters that we could as well. So obviously cat filters have a, 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 great, a great filtration as far as Micron goes. Um, they're huge in the industry, everybody likes them and everybody knows it's kind of a universal thing on how well that they work. So people like them. So we wanted to kind of go in that direction. So we did a lot of research on what filters we wanted to use and we came up with the, the 1R, the 1R0749 for the actual fuel filter. And then the water separator is the 256-8753. And these are all designed to work on engines way larger than the 6.7. So you're talking, this 1R uh, fuel filter is actually designed to work on all the way up to a CAT C32, which is a 32 liter diesel engine that they use in marine use. And when you're talking 32 liters in an engine that produces almost 6,000 foot-pounds of torque, it's more than adequate to, you, to filter the volume that you're gonna use on a 6.7 liter engine. So that's one of the key things that we wanted to touch on with this. And you know, that was one of the key development things was making sure that we had way more filter than we needed. It adds not only efficiency and flow, but it also adds uh, longevity to your maintenance. So your, your maintenance points and everything, they grow. So, 
you have a lot longer mileage that you're going to be able to run. Um, you know, on an over the road truck, something that's putting hundreds of thousand miles on a year, they, they change these filters every 20 to 40,000 miles. So, you know, this, this filter will flow 320 gallons per hour whenever a factory filter is going to flow maybe 120, 150 gallons. It's, it's well over double the volume. But, you know, you're, you're also comparing, uh, you're also comparing inter change intervals to an over-the-road truck that is getting six miles to a gallon compared to your truck that gets, you know, 12 to 18 or possibly even better. So once again, you're flowing way less fuel through it. It's just an overall warm and fuzzy feeling when you know that you're not having to change it as, as often and you have a really good filter hanging under the truck. So what we'll do here is we'll kind of go over the design and the key features of how everything connects and kind of what this piece is and what we have going on here. So the first thing we'll go over here on the table is obviously since we're putting both filters, the fuel filter and the water separator under the truck, you're probably asking, all right, what are we doing up top? Are we leaving the factory filter? In this case, no. You're removing the top filter entirely. And what we give you is it's a, it's, we call this a fuel manifold or a branch or a T, whatever you want to refer to it as. We call it a fuel manifold. And basically what you're doing is you're deleting the top filter. And the way that this locates, it actually keys to the valve cover, locates in in the perfect angle, and all the factory lines under the hood connect just like they would to the fuel filter. So there's no cutting, again, there's no cutting the lines, there's no um, modifying that you have to do, it all connects just like factory. And then we're also adding, because of the way we had to make this, we're also adding uh, dash six ORB AN uh, port plugs on the ends here. So you can actually take these out. If you're running a dual fueler, you wanna run a pressure gauge or something like that, these can all be used in, as an auxiliary type of manner. So that, that's pretty cool and it's very clean, it's simple and it, it bolts right in the factory location, no cutting, everything just hooks right back up. So that goes up top. And then moving over here to the main assembly, basically what we have going on here is a, a setup that goes right back in where the lower water and fuel separator goes. So what we have here is obviously both filters. We have a factory style mount flange. So this is, all, obviously this is all billet aluminum this flange, or I'm sorry, this bracket here, slides right into the same saddle as the factory uh, filter did on the tank. So this locked right back in, it uses the factory bolt to hold it in. Everything stays just like stock, stock was. All the top quick connects that come off of the fuel tank that are already on the truck, those all reconnect. So all those get reused, they hook back up just like they hook up to the factory unit. The return line passes through this from the engine. That connects there as well. And then obviously we have auxiliary lines right here. And as you can see, we, we label all of this. So I'll let you know your fuel filter goes on this side. Your fuel and water separator goes on this side. And you're probably asking what the heck this is. So what we ended up doing is one of the issues that we've seen with trucks and the way that the factory systems are set up is there isn't enough warning for water and fuel. So if the light comes on on the dash, normally it's way too late because this sensor, this, and by the way, this is the factory sensor that we use. The factory sensor is located in the base of the factory water and fuel filter setup. So by the time this sensor sees water and that light comes on in the dash, you already have water going through your primary fuel water separator filter and it's already on the way up to the truck. So you already have water in the system and you've been warned. So what we did is we created a pre-chamber. So this chamber is actually set up to function just like the base of a water and fuel separator, but the pump actually draws through this before it draws through the actual filter. So it's kind of set up in series. So as the pump's drawing through, it'll hit this chamber first. It has a chance to detect the water and then it goes through the filter. So it's kind of like a, a double chance of taking care of an issue or being warned. It's kind of a fail safe. So 
if water passes into this chamber, you'll see it in the dash first before it even goes through the water fuel separator, before it even gets to the pump, and before it goes out of the fuel filter. So that was something we wanted to do because we always felt like there wasn't enough time, there wasn't enough of a warning before you were gonna actually have that water at some point possibly going up to the engine. So that's how, that, that's how the suction side works, which is the, the pre-chamber and the fuel and water separator. And then on the pressure side, that's what these are. So we actually, we, we give you all the hose and everything, all the fittings that you need to just disconnect the factory pressure side and we loop it right in through this filter and then it goes right back up to the engine. Keeps everything in one spot. The other nice thing that we did, back to the suction side of the, the setup, is we give you another water and drain, water and fuel drain. So you have a petcock on the pre-chamber and the filter. So if you do see water here and you need to obviously change your fuel filters or flush your system, you can drain this chamber. You don't need to remove it. It drains just like a factory petcock would. So you get to retain the factory heating element, the water and fuel sensor, everything stays just like stock. So that's the main unit. And then we also, as we stated, we also include all the hose and fittings that you need to connect the, uh, the new high pressure filter, the, ba the, main, the main fuel filter underneath. All push walk style, there's no clamps needed. You lube them, press them together, and you're good to go. It's 250 PSI hose. All right, guys, now that we kind of went over our design and the way everything functions, I do want to touch on the fuel filters here real quick. Uh, the, the top filter, which is now underneath the truck, your, the new filter, the 1R filter on this side, is actually a 2 micron. So, you know, everybody may be asking, all right, you know, what's the micron? What's the gain? You know, you, we already talked about the flow and how everything's more efficient. Um, not only does it flow more, it is also a lower micron number, meaning smaller particles can't pass through. So the factory top filter is a four micron, and this is actually a two micron. So not only does it flow more fuel, it has a larger element surface area, but it's also a lower micron number, which is better. So the water and fuel separator side is actually the same as factory, it's 10. Uh, so the efficiency and everything, as far as the, the filtration is the same, but once again, we have more filter element and it's designed for obviously a larger engine. So all positive you know, notes. Uh, the, the other thing that we wanted to talk about and kind of touch on too is you'll see some of the other filter kits on the market like we talked about earlier in the video. Um, those filters are similar micron, but one of the issues with them, and you can see in their physical size, they're not designed for an application remotely clo close to this size engine. So as we discussed, being that these filters are capable of supplying fuel and filtering it for a 30 liter motor or engine, you're trying to do the same thing with a filter in these other kits that's designed to basically work with a, a Yanmar or a Kubota three cylinder diesel engine, which in our opinion is not adequate. It does not flow enough. And if you get to the point with your truck where you're not only just turning it up a little bit, but you're actually modifying it with injectors pumps, anything to, to change the fuel consumption of the engine under power, you want as much volume, as much flow as you can, but you still want that safety. And that's what you're going to get with this kit. So that's kind of the main things that we wanted to touch on with this kit. Um, another thing that I wanted to touch on real quick is we actually will be selling this fuel manifold separately from this kit as well for earlier trucks. So if you have a different fuel system on your truck or you just wanna eliminate the top filter because of how you're filtering it already or whatever it may be, you can buy this, mount this up on top of the engine. You have the ability to use auxiliary ports, everything the same exact way. So that is an option that will be for sale that way. Um, if you have any questions on this kit, we'd be more than happy to, to help answer anything you, you may wanna know or learn about it. Um, you can message us, email us, call us whatever, we'd be more than happy to help you. And we're pretty excited about this one. We hope you guys are too. It should be up on the site for sale if you're seeing this video. So as I said, get a hold of us if you have any questions and we'll catch you on the next one.